I'm Chris Palmer, 3D Doc Applications Engineer at Farm. Welcome to the first in the Point Sense for Revit tutorial series. The first thing we're going to look at in this video is to give you an overview of the tools within the Point Sense for Revit command ribbon. We will then look at inserting the point cloud and using the Point Sense for Revit tools to acquire its coordinates. Lastly, we will look at defining levels using the Point Sense tools and the standard Revit tools. Once you have installed your Point Sense Forever application, you will notice that you have a new tab available, which gives you a Point Sense command ribbon with a whole selection of new commands available. If I click on the Info tab, this will display the version of Point Sense Forever that I am currently using to create this video. The first command group we have are the Object Tools. This includes a tool to prepare the point cloud includes a tool to create author images from the point cloud, a tool to fit walls to the point cloud, and also a tool to create a topo surface based on construction points. Within the alignment group, we have a tool which will allow you to align multiple walls in one go. Within the work plane tools, we have a fit plane command using multiple points. We have a fit plane command using one click. We have the ability to create two intersecting planes. And we also have the ability to create three intersecting planes. Within the point cloud group, we have a coordinates tab, which will allow you to import scan positions, link point cloud coordinates from this point cloud to a VirtuServe project, and also to acquire the point cloud coordinates within the Revit project. We also here have the ability to export a region of point clouds from a 3D view as a PTS file. Next, we can enable or disable the automatic level mode, which will select the bottom and top constraints of walls and columns created using the VirtuServe tools. Within the VirtuServe tool group, we have a selection of tools which can be used within Revit or used within the VirtuServe product itself. We have a model line command that can create 3D model lines based on selections of the point cloud. We have a level command which we can create levels by selections of the 3D cloud itself. We have a wall and wall thickness tool which will allow us to create walls and their thicknesses based on 3D picks. We can create windows using two or three selections of the point cloud itself. Similarly we can create doors and openings bespoke to the size of the cloud using the selections of the cloud itself. We can create beams and columns using pics of the 3D point cloud in Revit or in VirtuServe. And we can insert construction points with XYZ values. Within the view selection tools, we have a hide and show point cloud command. And we also have a hide and show construction point command. Okay, if I open up Recap now, you can see I have a point cloud that is geo-referenced within the real world. And as I move my cursor around, the X, Y and Z coordinates update in the bottom left hand corner. These are limited to four digits before the decimal place. Now if we open up Revit and we go to our insert command, and point cloud, we can go and find our georeference building and we're going to import this center to center. You will notice that this is not displayed on the screen now. So in order to find this, we need to go into our 3D tab so that we can see where it is located within the project. Once I've located my point cloud, I'm just going to zoom in. And I'm then going to go to the point sense tab and the level VirtuServe command to select a level based on a pick of the cloud itself. I'm then going to click the ground here. What this will do is this will create a new level in my project browser, floor one, which I can double click and open up. So now I'm going to navigate in this floor plan to the location of the point cloud and we're going to select it. And we're going to use the move command within Revit 
to drag this back to the center of the project. Usually this would cause the point cloud to lose its coordinate system. However, using point sense, we can actually bring that back at a later date. So if I just cut a section through here, we can go to our section and have a look at what the Z value of this point cloud currently is. As you can see, the floor plan we created is currently at 145 meters above the level zero. So we're just going to use the move command to drag this back down 145 meters to the level zero. So the floor plan should match the level zero. I'm just going to delete these floor plans just because we don't actually need that. And I'm also just going to edit our crop view. Uh, as you can see, it's quite big just so we can focus in on the actual point cloud itself. So just delete this and redraw it around the object. If we just now go to the level zero plan itself and open that up, you can now see that we have a floor plan set at level zero. And if we just move this section along slightly and open that up, there you can see our level zero reference marker showing a zero origin point for the project for the project base point uh, using the local coordinate system and what we can do is we can now go and use the point sense command again to just drop another level in there at first floor level as you can see that's 2.9 meters above level zero using the local coordinate system I'm just going to move this level one out of the way so that we can uh, work on the other levels possibly to the ridge or the top of the wall And if we just select this level now and drag it across, and just to show you that this is currently at the same position, um, the shared corner system and the project corner system are currently at the same position. There we are, we can zoom in, we can see the shared origin point and the project origin point are at the same spot. Now, if we go to our coordinates uh, tool in the point sense tab, and we go to the acquire point cloud coordinates tool and we select the point cloud that's going to update the shared coordinate system and now you can see our first floor plan is referencing its z value in the real world so that's using the z value that was given to it in the georeferencing process in the registration and we can switch back and forth between that and we can do it for the other levels Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will start to look at some of the wall extraction and wall alignment tools.